So I've had my Ugreen DXP 4800 Plus for a while now, and I've also had my Synology Disk Station DS923 Plus for a little bit longer. I wanted to come back and take a look at the two of these now, because when the Ugreen first came out, of course the hardware was much faster, but the software wasn't really there yet, and they had you know, a lot of stuff to do. And I already made one video showing how to install TrueNAS onto the Ugreen NAS. But I personally don't think a lot of people should do that because the latest version of the Ugreen OS is really getting somewhere. Now that the software has improved as much as it has, I think it's about time to take another look at the Ugreen NASSYNC DXP4800+. Plus. Links are in the description if you want to check the current prices. And I'm going to compare that directly to my DS923 Plus from Synology. I wanted to compare these two because they're both four bay NAS units and they're perfect for home use, but also really good for small business use. So they look really similar, except you can see there's a few differences on the outside already. So the Ugreen already has more ports, like way more ports right on the outside. We got USB on the front of this one, but on the front of the Ugreen, we have USB, we have USB type C, and we also have an SD card slot right there. So that's a bit of a bonus. Uh, you know, I went through and made a little graph here to show you the differences. And we're just gonna go right down from the CPU model. The other thing I want to say is right now this one says $6.99 but there's a $105 coupon. Click on apply that and it's going to be the same exact price. So what can you get for the same exact price? The build quality on these is both very very good as well. So the CPU well the Ugreen has the Intel Gold 8505. It's a 5 core 6 thread. Uh, 4.4 is the max turbo on that one. This to me is very similar to like a N95 or something if you're not familiar with the Intel Gold. Well what it is is it's four efficiency cores and one of the performance cores whereas like you know an N95 is just all efficiency cores. You've got that extra performance core to give you that first core boost which is very important in my opinion because a lot of stuff it just runs on one core and if the one core is like one of the beefy cores well that's great so you're going to have that as your first core and then the four efficiency cores there to just take care of all the background tasks it makes everything feel really snappy another thing that's nice about that is we have two threads with the performance core so you're going to get six threads overall and that'll be great for virtual machines and everything and then on the Synology we have the Ryzen uh, R1600. It's only a dual core. Their previous unit had a quad core, but this is a much better dual core that is hyper threaded. So this one does feel pretty good, but it's not quite on the same level. The Max Turbo is 3.1. When it comes to the memory, the Ugreen comes with eight gigabytes and it's DDR5. So it's faster memory and you can expand it up to 64 gigabytes. The Synology is only four gigabytes and it's expandable to 32 gigabytes, but it's DDR4, it's ECC. So another thing about moving from DDR4 on the Synology to moving over to the Ugreen with DDR5, DDR5 is much better when it comes to error correction. So ECC is kind of like, hmm, okay, DDR5, it already does a lot of that stuff, doesn't have as many of the bit flip nonsense things going on. BTRFS is also really good at all this stuff. So when you combine all that together, I feel like we have a very safe environment for 99.99% of the people out there. And, you know, DDR5 is also a little bit faster. So it's kind of just like a very good winning scenario. And I don't think enough people talk about the ways that DDR5 is different from DDR4 other than just the speed. But you also have much better handling of the data so that there's, uh, you know, less of a chance of bit flipping. So yeah all right they're both four bay of course all sata and then we have our ssd slots we have two of them on each they're both nvme one thing that's a little bit different is we have internal memory on the ugreen again it's another little bonus the, there's no internal memory on the synology it installs the operating system on the discs that you put in so the operating systems are going to be running on your slower spinning discs and it's going to take up a little bit a little bit of the space not much but you know we have just 120 gigabytes of internal flash memory already on the Ugreen and you can install any operating system on that. Or here's another use case that's kind of interesting. You can install two more NVMe, put different operating systems on those and then use the internal memory for your Ugreen OS. And then you can switch between operating systems if you wanted to by just going into the BIOS and changing the boot disk. You can do those things. And it also allows you to experiment by just saying, okay, I'm gonna keep the Ugreen OS on my internal 128 gigabyte storage. And I'm gonna like mess around and install some stuff on two NVMe SSDs that I put in there. I'm gonna try, try out whatever. So that's a pretty big advantage in my opinion. When it comes to RAID support, well, they're all the same except there's one difference. Synology also supports their Synology version of RAID, which is pretty nice. So we've got to give Synology the edge right there. The main difference between the Synology RAID 
and just regular RAID. A Synology allows you to mix and match drives. So you can have just random drives and it'll create a RAID array across all of them. And then if one of those drives dies, you can replace it with a different drive. So that's the only real difference when you're talking about RAID support for all the others, you need to have the same drives. All right, LAN, this is pretty big. On the Synology, you get two gigabit Ethernet NICs. That's it, you get two of those. The LAN ports on the Ugreen, one is 2.5 gigabit. The other one is 10 gigabit. And that one will also work at 2.5 if you plug that up. I could just plug it directly in. These are RJ45 ports. They're not SPF plus or anything weird. That's a huge bonus. Now you can go and get 10 gigabit for the Synology. It's an extra expense and it's not cheap but you can get one and then install it in the back. I mean, what year is it? This, the DS923 Plus came out in 2023 as per the 23 on the end, but two gigabit ethernet nicks? What are you doing? You're just trying to sell that accessory, but right over here, this already has it, plus 10 gig. So yeah, this one doesn't have any PCI Express expansion, but in my opinion, it probably doesn't need it. This one does have the Gen 3 by two, and that's mostly gonna be uh, used by, you know, purchasing an upgrade for your NIC. So yeah, as far as the USB ports go, well, you got a couple of USB uh, 3.2 Gen 1 on the Synology. On the Ugreen, we have plenty of USB. We got USB-C, we got USB-A, one of them's 10 gigabits per second, the other one's five gigabits per second. And then we have two USB 2 ports, which are 480 megabits per second. That means you can plug up all kinds of extra stuff. Plus we have the SD card there and you can actually use those as external hard drives that you do like regular routine scheduled backups to. Now, when it comes to video, Synology has none. We have HDMI 4K output over on the Ugreen and that's really handy when you're installing third-party operating systems or you, you know, this is a little computer. You could literally use this as a computer. You could use it as your media center or whatever. Now, when you're running like your Ugreen OS or something, it generally just shows a screen that says like, hey, connect to me on this IP address. But if you're installing like alternative third-party operating systems, that's gonna be really handy. All right, when it comes to the operating system, all right, we're gonna cover these two and uh, you know, I'll talk about the differences between the two of them. But when it comes to operating system support, you get a Synology, it comes with Synology Disk Station Manager and that's the way it's gonna be. Installing third-party stuff, not really supported. It's not really a thing you do with Synology, so you just use their stuff. Now, to their credit, uh, DSM is really nice. Got a lot of apps for it. It works very well and it's especially tailored for their stuff. However, with the Ugreen, you can use Ugreen OS, which has, in my opinion, over, year over year, it's the most improved operating system. But here's the thing about the operating system support. You can install whatever you want. So TrueNAS, you wanna run Unraid, whatever. You can put something else on there if you want to. But I think most of you should and will be using the Ugreen OS once you take a look at what we can do here. So I'm just gonna kind of have a little bit of fun here and go back and forth and just see some things. So. I just updated to the latest version like a few minutes ago. So this is the screen you're greeted with. I am going to get rid of that Windows looking background. It's nice to have something that feels comfortable and familiar, but this feels a little bit too much like Windows 11 for me. So I'm just gonna come up here and click on, there we go, select wallpaper. Ugreen is going to have this autumn scene right here. And then Synology is gonna have this random screenshot from my last Oblivion playthrough, just so you can tell when I'm going back and forth. So they're very similar in the layout now. And I find that to be actually really easy. I mean, this is, there's a reason that this layout works. It, it's just easy to follow. You can tell what's going on. So we've got our file manager up here. I've already got, yep, got it all ready to go. This looks very similar to the file station that we have over here. We've got a lot of stuff going on over here. I use the Synology quite a bit and used it for years. I actually think this might have a easier to look at interface. It looks more modern. It is what it is. When it comes to control panel, they're almost identical as far as like what you can do. Like all this stuff here, take a look. Synology, you green. And when it comes to what you can do, like for instance, I'm just gonna show you like the file services, SMB, FTP, and NSF for Linux stuff, whatever. Come over here, I'm gonna click on my file services and it's very similar. So some people may say, hey, it's copying that. Good, good, thank you. Good. This this works, the Synology works really well. So if you make the, make the interface similar, and like I said, this feels a little bit cleaner and more modern to me than the Synology, Yes, I absolutely like this. It works. It comes to our device connection here. We have our remote access we can configure. Ugreen has the Ugreen link now, and you can set that up so you can log in remotely from elsewhere using your Ugreen link ID, or you can just enable DDNS like I'm going to do. And then over here on Synology, we have remote stuff as well. I forget what it's called, but I don't use it. So yeah, if you just go through this, it's very similar and has 
almost the same functionality. It's similar, but the Synology does have a couple more options. So depending on what you need. When it comes to virtual machines, Synology does have Virtual Machine Manager, and that's got a lot of different options. Got some virtual machines running on there. So the thing about this is we have way more resources for virtual machines. So they've just introduced their brand new virtual machine app. I feel like the Synology has a few extra options, but you can get most versions of Linux and Windows working just fine with this. It's very easy to create a VM. You just come up here, new VM, and import your virtual machine or create one from an ISO. So you can do that. But the Synology Virtual Machine Manager is a bit more mature and has more options at the moment. I just set this up on the settings and I noticed that it automatically created me a network bridge which saved me a lot of time and hassle and headache. So that's cool. And it also, I can do a vert IO. There we go, it may, it may change things. If I have a vert IO driver disk, I can add more images. That's cool. Add more hard drives right there. You know what, this is pretty easy to use. After you click start, you can click on connect. It'll open up a little VNC window. This is super seamless. When it comes to all the virtual machines you're gonna install on these uh, different NAS units, you can over provision them. You can say like, hey, this one needs more. They may fight a little bit if you're trying to do too many things at the same time, but generally your virtual machines, they're not all gonna be using max power at the same time. So usually kind of safe to do that as long as you know, you know what you're doing. Yeah, cool, Linux Lite's working just fine. It'll run much snappier once I install it. There's our network. All right, next up, let's take a look at the App Center over here. I think all of our main bases are covered. Photos, music, Video Center, and we've got our BitTorrent client, Docker right here, Firefox, if you want to be able to browse the internet directly on here for various reasons. You've got your sync and backup right here. Storage Manager comes pre-installed. So, you know, it's not as crazy as the list you're going to get with Synology or some of the other NAS units that have been out for a little while. Have like a more mature environment. But let's take a look at the Synology over here, our package center. So we've got just more stuff in general. And we have multiple different syncing and backup apps and whatever. And then we have our community tab right here with all kinds of different apps. All right, when it comes to the other apps, we have photo apps on both. And I'm going to be honest, I don't use a lot of these apps. I use like specific apps on my own devices, but both of them give you pretty good options when it comes to organizing your photos and organizing your music. Both have a music app that you can use to listen to music anywhere. You can listen to it on your phone. You can listen to it on whatever devices. You can listen to it remotely as long as you have the remote stuff enabled. You know, I I think I do prefer the square edges to the rounded edges, but it's very similar in the way it works and the way it functions. You agree, and if you're listening, there's one thing I would love. They have this uh, random 100, and if you have a large library, this is a great way to you know, rediscover some of your old favorite music. How about some Mastodon? How about some Shovel Knight? How about some Philip Glass? So that would be cool to have over here, but again, this is very early days. Neither of the music apps support Opus files. You have to rename them. It only supports the AUG extension, and that's kind of frustrating because most of my music on, you know, most of my music is in the Opus format, so it doesn't work very well on either one of these apps. But if you're using MP3s, AAC, MP4, WAV files or whatever, it's going to work just fine. But I think either one of them do, does the job. I think they both do the job just fine. I don't really use like the albums and stuff, uh, their photo apps or whatever. They both do a pretty good job. They both have nice ways to like organize things. By the way, I used to be a photographer and these are some photos I took of a, a friend who dressed up like Monroe. So yeah, some of my old photos on here just <laughs> you're, you're being able to spy on me. It's, it's very personal stuff right here. And then when I was in Japan, that's, that's what I had for dinner, yeah? That was delicious. Hey, my old friend from New York. Well, I wonder how she's doing. So that's, yeah, stuff I used to do back in the day. Doesn't that look like an eagle? I don't really use these too awful much. I use my own desktop applications. No, but if you're someone who wants an easy way to organize, I think they both do a decent job with photos. Right now we have Video Center, which you can use this if you wanted to create libraries and use this as your, your way to watch media and everything. This will work just fine. So Synology has Jellyfin, and it also has Plex Media Server in their community center. So with Ugreen, you're going to be installing Jellyfin and Plex and whatever other apps you want to put on there. You'll be doing a lot of those through Docker, and there, you know, we do have Docker on there. So there is one little benefit to that. It, it's a little bit more difficult to get it set up in the first place, but a lot of the times on other units like Synology and Asus Store, the apps are not the latest version. They're not always up to date, and sometimes you don't get the versions for a few months. If you're you know, running Docker, you can install the newest versions yourself. So you'll be able to maintain things on your own, keep things more up to date. But I mean, it's like, do you want a one click installer? Or do you want to go over here and go through like six or seven steps, seven, eight, nine steps, whatever. So they have a tutorial here on their website on how to do Plex. Someone else has created a Jellyfin tutorial and I'll link those below so that you can get those up and running through Docker. You can get them working over here, but again, it just requires a little bit more work. 
When it comes to snapshots and everything, we have them on both. With the Ugreen, you'll need to download Version Manager, and then you can set all that stuff up. Come over here to Settings. For syncing and backup, we have Synology Drive, and you can install Synology Drive on your PC, your Linux or Windows PC, even Mac, I believe, and you can set up folders to sync. You can do the same thing with sync and backup from Ugreen, exactly the same. Just set it up and you can back up certain files and folders. Now, if you want to back up stuff to online services or whatever, well, it's not going to be done there. You're going to want to use something called A-List. I'll install this app so we can see it. And over here, we do have more backup solutions overall. And we have all of these backup services here. So there are just more apps over here for backup for different kinds of backups. So you've got most things covered. Whereas over here, you have a few different options for backup that I think 90% of everyone out there will be just fine with. So I haven't used this, but that's going to be the option to, you know, sync up with Baidu, NetDisk, whatever, Alibaba Cloud, OneDrive, and Google Drive. So if you want to sync up all those things, you can do it that way. Overall, we got a bigger ecosystem of backup options over here on Synology. But like I said, it's all dependent upon what you need. So you just have to figure out if your needs are met here or if you'll need one of the other options here. And again, you can install things through Docker. So if you have other backup solutions you want to try out and there's Docker uh, applications that you can run, well, you can do it that way. Synology also has some pretty powerful stuff like their surveillance station where you can set up uh, cameras and webcams to uh, you know do surveillance or whatever and we don't have anything that's quite like that over here yet when we get something like that it'll be very interesting so i'm not sure exactly what they have planned for all this but you know all right one other thing i want to mention you know i i said that you could install third-party operating systems on the dxp 4800 plus well you can also install the synology operating system on the Ugreen. I'm not going to tell you how, but the software is called Exponology. So if you wanted to, you could do that. And there's some people online who said, I did it. It's way faster than it is on the Synology because again, this is just a regular computer with all kinds of, you know, cool specific stuff for NASA's on it, but it's just regular RAM, regular CPU, regular old hard drives and NVMe and everything. So yeah, you can install stuff on it. So that is something. I'm going to keep the Ugreen OS on there because I want to see uh, how the app store matures. I think the virtual machine uh, situation is very good now. I think the overall layout is probably cleaner than just about anything I've seen, even though there are more options on the Synology. But I think the hardware strength of the Ugreen just makes it just too much better in that regard. Software can be improved. Hardware is what it is. You're not gonna download any more RAM. You're gonna download an upgrade to the Ugreen OS though. So that's what I'm waiting to see. And if they improved this much year over year, who knows? And, you know, I, I hope this video, I hope Synology watches this and I hope they feel a little bit of pressure because I think they might have gotten complacent in that sort of four bay area. And they thought that it would be OK to give us a two core and give it, give us, you know, like gigabit Ethernet and make us upgrade. I had to upgrade to the 10 gig Ethernet. And I think that it's ridiculous that we should have had to do that when we have 10 gig and 2.5 gig already on the Ugreen. So bottom line for me is that the Ugreen wins hands down when it comes to hardware. When it comes to software, yes, the Synology does have a few more bells and whistles, does have a more mature app ecosystem, uh, does have a more mature virtual machine manager. But the Ugreen is vastly improved and I think for about 90% of people out there it'll cover most of the bases depending on what you need and then you can sideload a couple other apps and be sure to check out all the links for the Ugreen NAS products down in the description. I want to know which one you would pick if you had to pick between these two. Uh, do you care about the much beefier hardware that you're going to get with the Ugreen or do you want the software of the Synology that's tried and true and has all the extra bells and whistles and features from you know years and years and years of development? Which one? I'm curious. Let me know in the comments and I'll see you there.